There are a lot of things in our universe that generate light, and most of the times it's, it's familiar things like stars or nebula, but, but there are some processes. There are some processes that generate light that are almost entirely unfamiliar to things we might recognize on the Earth. Like, like you can make an analogy between a light bulb and the sun. The kind of light they give off is very, very similar. But once you start cranking up the energies and start getting really, really, really intense, you get some very, very strange physics and you get some very exotic sources of light. For example, for example, let's, let's say you take a radio antenna, right? You know, you stick a wire in the ground and hook it up to a, a, a generator and you start moving those electrons up and down the wire. That will start generating radio waves. That's no big deal. What if you started doing it really fast? really fast. What if it was so fast you couldn't do it up and down anymore? That's a lot of starting and stopping. You're getting kind of tired of that. So you take your antenna and you bend it into a circle and you can just send this electron going in loops and loops and loops and you can push it like close to the speed of light or something. It will still emit radiation. It will still emit radiation, but it won't be radio waves anymore because it's going so fast because it has so much energy and Unlike a radio antenna, a radio tower that will emit radio waves in all directions, because it's going so fast, there's some relativistic effects, some special relativity stuff that takes that, that beam of radiation and condenses it down into, into a cone that, that points out from the direction of, the, of travel for the electron. This is a kind of radiation that we call synchrotron radiation because we can also generate it here on Earth in our particle accelerators. When we start moving these electrons or charged particles at really, really high speeds in our particle accelerators, we get this kind of light. And we can see it in the universe. There, there are places in the universe with enough energy to start driving electrons to go in circles really, really fast and generate synchrotron emission. Active galactic nuclei are perhaps the best examples of these. So what if, what if you took an electron, again, an electron or any charged particle, and you slammed it through some water or something? Might be kind of interesting. Especially when we know that light slows down in a medium. If light is passing through air, it's slower than if it were passing through a vacuum. And if it were passing through water, it's slower still. Well, if the speed of light is slowed down in a medium, that means you can send particles that can outrace that beam of light. They can go faster than the light in that medium. Not in vacuum. You can never beat light in vacuum, but in a medium you can. And you get a special kind of radiation from this effect. You get a kind of radiation that's almost, the math gets super wonky right away, but you can kind of sort of visualize it as, as a sonic boom, as a light boom. This is an effect of a particle traveling through a medium faster than the speed of light in that medium, and it generates wakes, just like a boat going through water or an airplane going through the air. And if it's going faster than that light speed in that medium, the wakes can pile up on top of each other and reinforce themselves, and you end up with something like a sonic boom. This is called Cherenkov radiation, and this is actually useful a lot in astrophysics experiments where we build big giant water tanks and we wait for high energy particles to come zipping through faster than the speed of light in water, and they will actually leave behind a, a blue flash of light, a light boom. This is Cherenkov radiation. And the third one I want to tell you about it's not, it's not the most exotic one. It's not the most high energy one. It's not the craziest one, but it does have the best name. So I'll tell you the name right away. For this kind of radiation, it's called Bremstrahlung. 
and apologies to all the Germans out there for me mispronouncing it. Maybe it's like Bremstrahlung. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's a cool word though. It's a cool word. Bremstrahlung. It's German for breaking radiation breaking radiation, the radiation due to breaking. And you get this when you have an electron, again, as an example, a charged particle, blasting through, doing its own thing, own th its thing. and there's, uh, say, a nucleus over here, a positively charged nucleus, hanging out, doing its own thing, its own thing. The electron comes zipping through, and there's a little bit of interaction there. They talk to each other, there's a little bit of mutual attraction, so the electron's path will get bent, before it continues on. So there's a little change in trajectory as it comes near that nucleus. That is a change in direction, that is a change in velocity, that is an acceleration, that is a change in energies, that is the release of radiation. So this effect of fast moving electrons swimming through a field of nuclei and getting little deflections here and there, they will emit their own radiation called Bremsstrahlung. We see this kind of radiation most commonly in something we call the intracluster medium. Clusters of galaxies are the most massive structures in the universe. Collections of thousands of galaxies all glued together with gravity. And between and among all the galaxies is a hot, thin gas. And this gas lights up with Bremsstrahlung processes and generates tons of x-rays. So you can see a giant cluster of galaxies, home to a thousand galaxies. And if you look at it with just visible light, you just pick out all the individual galaxies like bees in a beehive. But if you take an x-ray picture, you see this glow that permeates the entire with in structure of these massive clusters. And that is due to perhaps my favorite word in physics, Bremsstrahlung. Say it with me before I go. Ready? Bremsstrahlung. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you liked this video and you'd like to see more. Go to patreon.com slash pmstutter to help me help you with all this science knowledge goodness. And I will see you next week. Thanks.